family welcome back to my channel i know it's been a minute but i'm back now if y'all read that title down below then y'all should already know what we are here for today it has been a long time when i say a long time two years to be exact it's been two years since i have done a review um for 600 pound life but we back at it today y'all know i do not like to waste time before we get started please be sure to like share comment and subscribe turn on your post notifications so that you notify every single time your girl call your phone and uh let's get into this review shall we this is season 12 episode 3 delana's journey okay so miss delana is 43 years old she is from greenville tennessee um, and her weight is unknown. Most of the time when we open up the episode, the weight is always unknown. She's very, very pretty. Very pretty. But she, her top row, I don't know if she, I think they was rotted out. But like her top row of teeth is non-existent. So when I seen that, I was like, well, how in the hell is she eating with no top fucking row of teeth? And she got to have some type of damn indigestion because I tell you, I got all my teeth. And sometimes I still be forgetting to chew and that shit be having me all type of ch choked up and hooked up around here. But nevertheless, honey, we get into the episode. So we see her waking up. So when they first pan, I'm like, that bed look kind of comfortable. How big is she? Like, is she not that big? Because they look like they laying pretty comfortable. You know, most times we see them, you know, the folks be looking uncomfortable as hell laying in the bed with their spouse. Well, we see what kind of bed they got, honey. It's two beds put together, basically. So she gets up, she basically makes her way out of the bed, but she used an office chair to roll around. AB, did y'all see that towel on that office chair? I was trying to figure out if it was blood or if it was boo-boo. I was, I was confused. So she does not get into the bathtub. She sits on the side of the tub and she uses like a brush, like, you know, the back strubber brush and she puts a rag over it and gets into, you know, the places that she needs to wash up and get herself clean. She says she does not bathe every day, maybe every other day because it's very, very diff difficult for her and it's painful for her. Takes her bath, she gets dressed and of course it's time for breakfast. So for breakfast, she says she eats crispy bacon, sausage, biscuits, eggs, and a side of coffee. When we get into her childhood, her upbringing, um, she was raised by her first cousin, which her name is Mary Ann, and we see her later on in the episode. Her mom had some complications and basically signed over her rights to the cousin, and her cousin had her ever since. And then once she was like seven or eight years old, her mom came back around, took her and the sister, put them in the car, drove them a couple miles down the road, put the sister out, and told her to walk back home and kidnap Delana. Delana said that she was living with the mom up until she was about uh, 12 years old or something like that. And then her mom ended up dropping her back off at home with the grandmother and the cousin. She got pregnant at the age of 20 and she was in an abusive relationship. They got a divorce. She didn't have no money for no lawyer. He took the baby. So she had a boy the first go around. Before that, she had a miscarriage. And she got pregnant again by a different person. Um, she got married, they divorced. He was abusive. She had a baby girl named Savannah. Um, she divorced the husband. Savannah stayed with her um, up until she was about 12 years old. And then she moved with the brother, which is Delana's brother, um, Danny, who we eventually see in the episode as well. Delana and Savannah, they don't have a good relationship. Um, and which we found out later in the episode is mostly because Savannah felt that Delana was always projecting, like projecting her insecurities on her. Like, don't do this, don't do that, or you're gonna end up like me. And it, in turn, messed with Savannah's mental and she ended up having like body dysmorphia, you know, off of that. So it was too much for her to take and she left. Eventually she ended up meeting James. They met on an online dating site. They went out on a first date at a breakfast spot and it was up for them ever since, honey. They got married, um, but she ended up getting an infection in her leg and she was in the hospital for a few months um, or five days, I'm sorry, five days. And James moved in with her and start taking care of her. Eventually they got married. And then we see in James' confessional, he says that, you know, he missed doing adventurous stuff for her. Like she was very, very adventurous. They would go to Florida, take little road trips, sightsee, stuff like that. He missed that part 
of their marriage and he hopes that with this journey with this surgery that they can get back to that says every time they try to do something that'll you know good, get Delana back on a good foot get her back eating healthy on a healthier path she'll do it for a few days and then she'll fall off the wagon and he also acknowledges the wrongdoings because he said that he was enabling her, bringing her things that she wanted, anything that she asked for, she gets upset. He pacifies her whatever with whatever that she asked for so that she's not always angry. A little later, they get ready to go to the grocery store. Um, she tries to go to the grocery store with them. She makes it all the way outside to the car and she was having some difficulties. Gets out of the car, get ready to go back in the house and falls on the ground and she wasn't able to get back up. So. The biological mom come over there and she have to call 911 to get the ambulance to come to help her up. And they eventually make it there. It took about six or seven of them and a sheet to get her up off that ground. They tried to take her up the steps. Her knees gave out, so they had to rip the railing off the banister and put her in a wheelchair and wheel her in the house. I mean, but she she was very grateful. She wasn't mean, she wasn't nasty, because you know, most times when we see these people on 600 pound life, honey, they fall, they get into an accident. They act like it's everybody's fault except for them being big as hell. I thought her ass was gonna end up in the hospital, honey. That's what I thought, the way she was crying about her knees giving out. It's one of uh, the first month into the journey. Um, she's headed to Houston to go see Dr. Now. She says that since the fall that I just previously told y'all about, she's been taking her weight loss journey serious. She started it herself. Um, and I did see that she was moving around a little bit better. She said once again, she did not know how much she weighed. The last time she got on a scale, she was about 500 pounds. So she jump started her weight loss journey she started doing things on her own eating a little bit better portion her out her meals that's so she's saying so they say they're gonna split the ride up six hours there six hours back so they get in the car and they get like 50 miles up the road and the damn van break down they break down in the middle of the road now y'all if y'all know me y'all know I do not ride on no expressway. I don't drive on no expressway. I will ride in the car with you, but I don't drive on no expressway. And this shit here just showed me exactly why I keep my ass off the expressway because they broke down in the middle of the damn road. I would have pissed on myself. The damn production crew had to get out the car, help them push the van over to the side of the road. Then we get roadside assistance. They come, they jump start the car so they can make it to a mechanic shop. And then by the grace of God, the mechanics rent vehicles, so they ended up renting them a van so that they can make it to Houston because they heard about her story and what she was trying to do. She was saying that this day really took a lot out of her, so she felt like they just needed to take, take the rest of this day, regroup, and then, you know, start fresh in the morning. They make it to Houston, and they go straight to Dr. Downs' office. They go to the bag. Um, she said she's looking forward to getting on the scale because she didn't know how much she weighed and like I said the last time she weighed herself she was in the upper 500s. See that her current weight is 646 pounds. Dr. Now comes in the room and you know he gives the whole rundown. They want He want to talk about the eating habits so he asks her you know what's your eating routine? What's your daily habits like? Child, this lady starts giving him this mumbo jumbo talk about her eating one yogurt a day, eating a salad for lunch. Like, yeah, you may be doing that now since you've had that fall and you said you jump started your eating journey or your health weight loss journey, but you wasn't doing that at first. Get this man the truth so he knows how to help you in the future. Like, and Dr. Nell's looking at her like, I know this bitch is lying, but I'm finna give her exactly what she needs so that she can get the help that she need, okay? So he put her on a low calorie, high protein diet, and he says that her BMI is very, very risky. So she needs to do a lot of moving around, a lot of exercising to get that BMI down because it can put her at risk when it's time for her to have the surgery. Dr. Now starts talking to the husband, you know, so are you the enabler? Like, what are you doing? You know, and the husband basically admits that when the situation happened with the car because she was upset and in her feelings, he went and got her a candy bar. And Dr. Now got on his ass to let him know, like, you can't be doing that. If she's going to be on the weight loss journey, you have to be not on it with her, but you have to be in it with her. You can't be bringing her all that bullshit for her to eat. 
He gives her a meal plan and he gives her an exercise plan. He gives her the pages throughout his book. He told her that her goal was to lose 30 pounds within the next two months. And if she doesn't have transportation, then they'll do the checkup virtually, which we've seen him do in several episodes. She go on her phone and say, I have this app. I track my calories. He told her, let me see the app. She showed it to him. He said, listen, delete the freaking app, okay? Delete the app. And this is the first time I've ever seen Dr. Now have a dang old personality. It's month two. The car's still in the shop. They still had a rental car that the people at the mechanic place gave them. Said she started the diet and the exercise plan. Okay, I already see how this gonna go. You talking about you know you eating more than 1,200 calories a day when he told you only eat 1200 calories a day lady you can't do it how you want to do it he says that she gonna plan a move to houston so that she can show dr now how serious she is about her weight loss journey and about you know her dedication we pay, uh, fast forward to month four she says that her life lately has been stressful the car still not fixed she still got the rental um, so that's holding up their move to Houston. They still haven't found a place in Houston. So I'm like, girl, that car is the least of your motherfucking words because if you get down there to Houston and you ain't got nowhere to lay your head, what you gonna do? She said she missed her last appointment to Dr. Now, but she has one virtually that she's about to get ready to do. Um, and the reason why she missed the last appointment is because she thought that they would have been moved by then, but they not. So she said that she's nervous to do this virtual appointment with Dr. Now because she feel like he gonna chew her up about missing the last one. And sure in hell enough, once she got her ass on that computer screen, that was the first thing that came out his mouth, why she missed the last appointment. Basically, they chit chatted up. She tell them that, you know, she's working on the move. She still don't have transportation, but she says that she think the car should be up and running within the next two weeks. He scheduled her an appointment. And the goal is to be done lost 50 pounds by the time she stepped foot in his office, okay? So it's two weeks later, she goes to a local clinic to weigh in. Now, I'll remind you, he told her two weeks prior that the goal was to be done lost 50 more pounds. So when we go to this check-in, she go in there, she weighs in at 651 pounds, which means she gained five pounds since the last time that she went to Dr. Now office. Now, I can tell you, the minute she walked in that office, I could tell that she had lost no weight. I didn't know that she had gained none, but I could tell she had lost none because baby girl was out of breath. She she could barely make it to the back to get on the scale. Get not Dr. Now on the line and he asked about her weight. She lets him know that she's 651 and he asked her, you know, you gained five pounds. Like, what are you doing? And she says, I don't know. Like, I've been sticking to the diet. I'm not understanding. I, I'm still gaining weight. And you know, he tells her, it's no way that you're sticking to the diet that I gave you and you're gaining weight and not losing weight, which she's not because like she said, she know that she was consuming more than 1200 um, calories a day. And it ain't enough of this and this and sitting your ass down and working out is gonna help you lose 1200 calories a day if you're consuming more than that. Uh, it's not rocket science sweetheart so we knew that anyway dr now asked her so what's next for you she says that she's gonna move to houston to show that she's ready to lose the weight um and that's period and dr now tells her you moving to houston don't got nothing to do with you losing weight you can lose that same weight in fucking tennessee you coming to Houston is pointless if you are not going to be on your A-game and do what you need to do to lose this weight and get this surgery. So she says that um, she doesn't understand why she's continuing to gain weight, but she's going to work a little harder and keep track of her calories and, you know, get everything together so that they can get their move started towards Houston. So then we fast forward, fast forward to month six. They are finally moving. The car is still not working but they still have the rental, so they're gonna hook their vehicle up to the back of the U-Haul truck and get moving. The mom is supposed to be going to Houston with them for a little while to live and help a hand. Lo and damn behold, when she tell us that the mom come walking through the door and tell her some bullshit as excuse about her not being able to go because she don't feel good and she not able to go. And if she was able to go, she would. And it's not because she don't want to go. She can't go because she just don't think she'll make it. It wouldn't be a good thing for her and da da da. And baby, I can tell you right there, Delana was in her head, she was like, this this is a bullshit ass excuse. Once again, I need you to be there for me as my mom and you can't do that. 
Like that, that was some straight up bullshit that she was kicking to that lady. And I was like, you know, just, just go. Just go, because at this point, the lady had done shut down. She wasn't even responding to the lady. Like, just, just go. She crying. She had to get on the phone. She had to call her brother, Danny, like I told y'all, the one that Savannah, her daughter, is living with. And Danny at work, but he lived in North Carolina, so he said he would be down to helping her move. He come right away. The truck was already loaded. I think they had, like, a couple of things that they had to get on the van. The daughter comes with Danny. We also learned that, you know, uh, Savannah and Delana haven't spoke to each other in about six or seven months. And Savannah has a baby. So Delana is a grandmother. When Danny comes, she brings the daughter and the grand the grandbaby. And they get a chance to talk. And, you know, we're not really talk, but, you know, they get a chance to be in each other embrace. And she got a chance to see her grandbaby. And they get moving, honey. They, they rest that night. And then the next morning, they get up and they head to Houston. They make it to the house. It's nice. It's spacious on the inside. But baby, I don't know if it was like a futon sofa or a mattress. But did y'all catch when they was moving that thing in the house? And they had the white part showing. And it looked like it was another fucking blood stain on it. It was a brown stain on it. Throw that shit in the garbage. That is disgusting. Who is laying on that? See, it's month seven. Um, since being in Houston, she says that she has been taking her diet serious and she has an appointment in a few weeks. So in those few weeks, I guess it goes to a whole nother month because it flashes to month eight. It's appointment day. Um, she isn't using her walker anymore. She does look smaller. She does her weight in and she is at 578 pounds. So she has lost 68 pounds. And I was like, you go girl. I gave her a round of applause because she did that. And I can tell that she was very, very proud. Even her husband, he was like, wow. Like, I can't believe you did it. Like to see that weight loss in that amount, amount of time. Like even with the move and everything. Like I, I was very proud of her. I know I talk a lot of shit, but I be proud of these folks. And this is one of those episodes where I can say, I almost shared a little too because I was like, oh, I'm so proud of her. Dr. Nell comes in and he asks, you know, what you're doing? What are you doing to keep the weight off? You know, lose the weight. You know, portioning, portion control, exercising. She says she's afraid of falling, so she does most of her walking and her moving around in the house. He didn't really have a problem with that. Um, he says that he is proud of her progress. He says that um, another she has another 40-pound goal for the next 30 days, and then she will be good to go for surgery. He says that being that her BMI is still high, it's 103, it's still very risky for surgery, so they don't have to do a whole lot of running tests and you know stuff like that just to make sure that she's good to go for surgery. Month 10. It's surgery day, baby. She in the bed. They rolling her back. You know, she's saying that she's nervous because, like, what if her heart isn't strong enough to take the surgery and all that stuff? And this is the, the start of the next chapter of her life. And they take her back. They get everything going. Dr. Nell says he took out about 80% of her stomach mass and left her with about 20%. So that's going to help her control her eating habits. And we see James sitting out in the waiting room. He says he's hoping for the best because he knows that anything can happen. But the surgery went well overall. You know, after the surgery, Dr. Nell always puts them on a liquid diet for about a month so that she can lose another 30 pounds. And then after that, he starts her psychotherapy. And Dr. Nell says he's very, very confident that she's going to be able to live a happier and healthier life. Okay, so it's month 11. Um, she's still on track with her diet. She's now allowed to have solid foods. And we see them, her, Delana, and her husband, James, they taking a little date trip to the art gallery, okay? She says that she is happy to be able to do more things like this because a year ago, she probably would have been like, nah, fuck it. I ain't doing it. And I'm glad because, like I said, it's going to definitely help their marriage. Um, she says she believes that she can get her weight down and be a great person. She knows that she has the support system that she needs. She just needs to focus and get it done. Fast forward to month 12. It's been a whole year. Um, they at the bar. They playing pool. Oh, they on another date, baby. Do you understand me? She She's doing her big one. Now, she does say that she is still kind of self-conscious and kind of embarrassed to be out in public being, you know, her size, but she doesn't feel trapped anymore. And she also feels like, you know, she can do a little bit, uh, do a little bit more. And 
that's how the episode ended, y'all. They had them a little salad. They chit-chatted it up, and they finished their pool game. But that's the end of this episode. That is the end of this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. And I will see each and every one of y'all in my next one. Peace out. I'm gonna go to the next one.